Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So I'm here in the Choco Rainforest in northwestern Ecuador. There are some amazingly cool herps in this country. And yeah, the Bushmaster was our number one priority for coming all the way out here. But there's a whole bunch of other really cool herps out here as well. So come with me and let's go check out all the really cool herps of Ecuador. I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles and I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. This is the Choco Rainforest. It's a relatively small area that has some reptiles and amphibians that are endemic. This forest used to cover most of northwestern Ecuador, however now it's a critically endangered habitat because of logging and oil companies and rubber companies. But in reserves like the Tesoro Escondido Reserve, there are still amazing things to be found, like this guy. This is a blunthead tree snake. These are amazing snakes that are almost completely arboreal. Look at that thin body and that huge head. And in that huge head, look at those huge eyes. They make up almost 25% of its head size. Blunthead tree snakes are rear fanged and they're mildly venomous. But that venom is not considered to be of any consequence to humans. This is an ornate cat-eyed snake, and these are just really cool residents of the Choco Rainforest here. They have those vertical elliptical pupils, just like a cat-eye, and that's of course where this snake gets its name. Like the blunt-head snakes, these are also mildly venomous. They do have a pair of enlarged root teeth at the rear of the upper jaw, which makes them rear-fanged snakes but the venom, again, is no consequence to humans. It only serves to subdue their natural prey, which is frogs and lizards. This is just another really cool snake to be found here in the Choco Rainforest. All right, so this little guy combines two of my favorite things. This is a Halloween snake. And this one found in this part of Ecuador is black, with these tiny white pinstripe bandings on it, but there's regional coloration with these snakes. And further north, that pinstriping turns into actually thick bandings and they're orange in color. So it creates an orange and black snake and that's where it gets its name, Halloween snake. This is one of the false coral snakes that is found out here. As a matter of fact, the other name for this snake is the Cope's false coral snake. And he's making a living out here in the Choco rainforest, eating primarily frogs, so they're found by permanent and temporary water sources where they hunt those frogs. But a lot of snakes and other animals in this rainforest use mimicry as a defense mechanism. And so this is one of the coral snake mimics that's out here and it just never ceases to amaze me how nature works. Because this is a harmless snake, but yet it is mimicking the coloration of a venomous snake. How does a non-venomous, pretty innocuous snake like this look at a venomous snake and say, that coloration seems to work for the venomous snake, I'm going to mimic it. It's just absolutely astounding to me how mimicry works in the natural world. But again, just an absolutely amazing little snake that again uses mimicry as a defense mechanism. And this is one of my favorite snakes found here in the Choco Rainforest. Uh, you know, of course, other than the Bushmaster. The Choco Rainforest also has some of the coolest amphibians anywhere on Earth, like this Hyla picturata, one of the many tree frogs that can be found down here, and one of the most beautiful. But there's also my favorite, the glass frogs. So Jorge and I have just found these little glass frogs by this stream right here. The light's getting pretty diminished as the day goes on here, and not only that, but we're deep inside the forest, and so we're gonna have to get creative as to how I film these. But as far as frogs go, I am completely mesmerized with glass frogs, and the reason is because it raises the question that if you want to be transparent, as glass frogs are, and that's how they get their name, 
Why are you only transparent on your belly that, as you're sitting upright, is hidden from any potential predator? The part that the predator sees is still dark and green like any other frog. So it raises the question, at this point in time, are we witnessing the middle of the road of evolution while glass frogs become completely transparent frogs? The answer is out there somewhere, I'm sure, but it really makes an interesting thought. It really doesn't make any sense to me why the only part of your body that isn't visible is the part that's transparent. But you can see here the veins. The white part here is its lungs, and then it has a black spot right under that vein, and that's actually its gallbladder. Its intestines and muscles are almost completely transparent. What's more is that its skeletal structure is also transparent. I really do believe these frogs are on their way to becoming completely transparent frogs. So here in the Choco Rainforest, when it gets to be dark like this, there's a species of boa that comes out that I was really hoping to see here. And here he is. This is one of the dwarf boas that is found here in Ecuador. And as a matter of fact, this one is actually endemic to the Choco Rainforest here in Ecuador. So I had to come here to find this guy in the wild. And it's a really interesting little dwarf boa because it sits by these streams, usually on vegetation, and it just watches the water. And what this little boa specializes in is not rodents like other boas. This guy specializes in fish and tadpoles. So it'll sit by these streams in the middle of these forests, and it'll go fishing all night long. So a more apt name for this boa is the fishing boa. And one of the cool adaptations that this boa has is its body shape. It has the weirdest body shape of really any snake, let alone a boa. Its belly is super flat, but then it tapers up towards the spine. And what this does is that gives a lot of traction to this boa to sit on slippery rocks or wet leaves. So again, this is a tracky boa. This is one of the boa species I was really hoping to find here in the Choco Rainforest. All right, Rattler, so those are some of the really cool herps we found out here in the Choco Rainforest. But wait until we get to the Amazon. The Amazon is the largest river tributary system in the world, and surprisingly, turtles are not very common here. But there are a few species that make this area home. But it's here that herpetologists like Richard Voigt discovered that turtles actually sing to each other underwater like whales do, and that's how they communicate with each other. But in certain places in the Amazon tributaries, like here on the Napo River, they congregate. And there's just hundreds of them just right out in this little lagoon here. And so what you do is take these bananas, strip off a piece of the peel, and you throw it in. And that is why there are so many of these turtles just hanging around this lagoon. It's kind of cheating because they're all coming in to eat, but I'm still counting them as my lifer. Let's check this out. This huge black caiman just came up on shore. And so we're gonna run up and try to find a piece of chicken and try to feed it. But this is a wild black caiman and it's about 20 years old. It's big, it's black, and it's beautiful. And we're gonna try to feed it some chicken. <laughs> That is the biggest black caiman I've ever seen. It's also the first black caiman I've ever seen. Oh yeah, I get it! <laughs> That's just like wild gator land here. 
He won't be hungry for another, what, three minutes? The best way to find an Amazon tree boa is to go up in the canopy. Look at this. That's where I'm going, all the way up there, if it doesn't kill me. All right, first flight of stairs. I'm gonna set base camp here and continue on in the morning. Okay, just a little further. Here we go. I'm feeling good. Just a little further. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling strong. Uh, I got this. Oh crap, I have a long ways left. That damn well better. I'd be an Amazon tree bowl up here. Whew. Look at this, there's a tree house in this enormous tree. And look at how far down it is already. Woo! All right guys, I'm at the top. Como se? 35 meters up. And let's face it, the only reason I climbed this monstrosity is because they told me that there was an Amazon tree bow up here. I would have never climbed this thing otherwise. Look at that, here he is right here. Hi buddy, how's it going? Nice little garden phase. Just sitting right here in this big mechanical tree. That just rules. But other than this snake, look at that view. Yeah. That's a beautiful view. Nothing that a planet drone up here can't see, but. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. And how, how much did you say? 35,000 meters? 35 meters? Oh, 35 meters. <laughs> All right, so I climbed 35 meters just to find this beauty. All right, Rattlers, we got him out of his little mechanical tree over there. This is a common coloration of an Amazon tree boa, and this is one of the species that I really wanted to find here in Ecuador. And look at this, she's actually pretty calm. Usually they will try to strike and bite and they have really pissy attitudes, but this guy, He's actually pretty calm. This is an arboreal snake, very aggressive, like you said, but for some reason, this guy is just nice. It was coiling around when we came up here, and that is why we called you, because yeah. you were looking for it, and we couldn't find it. I was on the ground looking for boas for the boa video, and they called me and said that they had a boa up here. Now, it's not the red tail boa that I was looking for down there, but oh man, is he nice. And I want you guys to look at how thin these Amazon tree boas are. They are perfectly suited for life up here in the canopy. And again, we're at 35 meters up here. And as a matter of fact, these guys eat mainly birds. And in that mouth, they have two sets of fangs. They have two that come from the top of the jaw, two that come from the bottom of the jaw, and they're needle sharp. And what they do is they sit and they wait on a branch and ambush. And when a bird flies up to them, bam, he strikes that bird out of mid-air, and those two sets of fangs stab into the bird, and that bird never had a chance. These guys, again, are perfectly adapted at life in the canopy, and they are perfect bird eaters. So no sooner did we talk about the needle-like teeth this guy has than he nailed me. Those needles went right into my thumb which is fortuitous because we're about to go piranha fishing. All right, Rattlers, so there are some of the most amazing reptiles that we found on this trip to Ecuador. You know, Ecuador is really one of the most beautiful countries I've ever been to. And if you ever get a chance to come down to Ecuador, there is so much to see here. There's the Amazon side, there's the coastal side, there's the Choco rainforest, there's everything to see here. And not to mention all the really cool herps that are here, but it is swelteringly hot, so be prepared for that. I mean, look at me, you could plant rice on my forehead right now. So I really hope that you guys really enjoyed everything that we saw here in Ecuador. Comment below, let me know what your favorite thing was. Was it the dwarf boas? Was it the Amazon tree boa? Was it the black caiman? I wanna know from you guys what your favorite herp that we saw here on this trip to Ecuador. So there's gonna be a lot more adventures from here in Ecuador. So as always, hit that subscribe button and when you do, hit that bell so you never miss an upload. Hit that like button, hit that share button. And until the next adventure from here in Ecuador, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on. <laughs>